Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our special CUBE presentation here on the ground in Seattle. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with my co-host, Rob Strecce, just digging into some of the innovations at AWS. And we're really excited to have Igor Sadukin here. He's the general manager of application observability at AWS. Hot topic. Igor, welcome. Good to have you. Thank you, Dave, Rob. Excited to be here. So observability sort of come out and mainstreamed the last couple of years. You know, people sort of know it as, you know, the old days application performance management. And But we're talking now about a much wider scope of capabilities. So help us understand uh, how AWS thinks about observability. What's the, what's the sphere that you operate in? Great. Um, at AWS, we care a lot about what our customers need. And as a global provider for cloud, we have a lot of different customers and they need their needs are very diverse. So what we do, what we provide as observability solutions is twofold. One is for customers that need native software as a service, pre-built observability solution. We have CloudWatch. And so that provides everything from logs to metrics, to traces, to synthetics, to real user monitoring, to you know many other things, including uh, integrated suite for application observability, right? So that's out of the box. It supports AWS services, supports any environment that is outside of AWS as well. And so that's pre-built solution, right? And for customers, for other set of customers that actually want a full-on open source observability, we offer managed uh, open source suite and for observability. That consists of open search for logs, uh, and Prometheus for metrics, and then Grafana, manage Grafana for uh, the interface. All of these solutions, either of them, are actually rooted and enabled through open telemetry. And that's what makes it perfect. Because from a customer perspective, you instrument once, you can benefit from either of them. Do, do you see Otel as being kind of that, uh, getting a center of gravity? Because there's a, been a lot of talk in the open community about various different things, like yeah. we're talking about with Prometheus and others, and mm -hmm. there's a whole litany of ones that are going to be talked about at KubeCon in a couple weeks. Is Otel really one where the community has really focused on because developers like it and can instrument with it pretty easily? Mm -hmm. This is a great and exciting topic. I'm super excited about open telemetry. Um, I'll give you maybe an example from a long past, right? Probably 30 years ago, uh, SMMP was introduced, right? Simple Network man Management Protocol. And it really made our networks reliable because power of standardization is hard to underestimate, right? It was really hard to make boundary conditions between variety of network vendors to work. And so the networks were just inherently unreliable and unmanageable. And so with this NMP, we were able to make our global networks very reliable. And I think that's the same transformation that's going to happen through open telemetry, that now we're going to make applications reliable at the same um, pace as we did with networks. It took a little while. It took a little while for all the devices to start to support SNMP and actually play. Um, and so I think we're going through the same transformation. So can you explain that a little bit? Because you're, you're right. I remember the days of, of DECnet and IBM SNA and everything was sort of incompatible, you know. And, and so are you saying that there's an analogy with applications? Why? Because the, the applications have locked inside of them all the data and the metadata and, the, and, and, and it's a bunch of automation stovepipes. So yep. carry that through and explain how you address that. I think there is, there, there's that power of standardization where there's a common way uh, to do, to observe an application, for example, right? There's a common way to record when there's an order is being placed and what do, you, what do I need to know? A customer ID. I need to know where it came from. Maybe I need to know the API name. Maybe I need to know what service it came from, right? And so the moment you can standardize a lot of those practices, then... Um, uh, engineers who build applications can benefit from that and they can do their operational tasks in a very common way and not having to worry about customization, which is a killer, right? Like the diversity of these customizations is what makes people unproductive. And so in this case, if you just solve that, that part, the same way as SNMP sold a simplest way to observe the devices up or down, 
we can do this for application. So, so that goes to the source, the, the the mainspring of the problem. It's not like you're harmonizing all that disparate data mm -hmm. at, at the tail end. It's it's what guidelines for engineers essentially to write to the standards. Yep, and that fundamentally solves the problem. Correct. And a lot of it is also through the open telemetry community effort. Mm. Is all, all, a lot of it is enabled out of the box, and the engineers don't even have to know in many cases. They just embed libraries that auto-instrument and then adhere to the standard and then provide the, the common pipe and the common way that this data is, is sent. And so can be sent to anywhere, right? And so even in those networking days, right, it didn't matter what vendor you're using to monitor your device. As long as you can establish common grounds of inter interoperability and making it all reliable. Here at AWS, we're all about making applications reliable for our customers. And so that's why it's such a key um, strategy for us. What does that mean for customers? It means the performance is more predictable, the, the, the recovery time is better, uh, doesn't go down as much. What, what does that mean for the, for the customer? So simple things like, knowing what your latency is of placing an order, right? Um, something as simple, right, can now be much more automated and much more reliable and much more uh, common practice that, you, that any engineer that runs an application or a service, right, can simply leverage instead of inventing their own, right? right. Yeah. And, and then moreover, as engineers, you know, change teams and they go work on different services, right, the more common it is, the easier it is to manage elsewhere and so this is leverageable skill. Um, so it's not, you're not stuck in any particular, you know, dynamic of, you know, certain solution. It can go elsewhere and be as productive. Yeah. And I, I think one of the interesting things, and you kind of hit on it, o Otel is a good, is a good place to focus. Uh, having been there with the SNMP, but then you had Armon and other things that came along to give you different levels of detail, similar to logs, metrics, and traces. How do you see Gen AI? Gen AI playing in this game? Because again, a lot of people are saying, yeah, great. I go and instrument these applications, these massive scale out, scale up, then scale back down type applications, but I'm overwhelmed with the amount of data that I'm actually bringing in. Where, where is Gen AI or AI playing in this space for you guys? So where we see a lot of benefit is summarization and just extracting interesting insights of, of all this data, right? And that's where by the way, a lot of the standardization also helps, right? Because it's an open standard. So LLMs understand and know about it, right? And so it's much easier to make certain conclusions and interesting summarizations, right? So that's where we see a lot of it um, uh, playing the role uh, in, in just exposing this information in a much easier to consume form, right? Without you having, as a customer, dig through the data manually yourself those insights can be very easily extracted and presented. But as you think about how AI is going to affect the application stack of now the big buzzword is agents and not just single agents or co-pilot, multiple agents, swarms of agents, imagine that I, I can only imagine what that's going to do to, to your, you know, your challenges. How are you guys thinking about that? And, and, uh, is the plumbing there to handle that? Will that how will that evolve or will it evolve? Does it so we see a lot of customers that come to AWS to build uh, Gen AI enabled applications, right? So you're leveraging Bedrock, you know, SageMaker, and so on, right? And we offer a lot of observability solutions. Why they are important is if you're if a customer builds an application that leverages a particular set of models, they probably want to know how well they respond uh, with what latency. Um, because it will affect their end users, right? And so we offer uh, solutions within CloudWatch, for example, to observe behavior of different models if you use them in your application. Using AWS SDK, you're making call to, uh, say, Bedrock to you know, leverage a particular model to evaluate you know, an interesting result you want to return to, to a customer. We also offer a set of observability solutions for people who use their own models at the bottom layer where a lot of the GPU visibility is very important, especially into cost and performance of those aspects when you're running your models inside of, for example, EKS uh, cluster. So we offer visibility solutions for that. 
So it, it's helping unpack the entire stack and also looking at it and how it plugs into the application. Because most, most of the time, an, app, an agent is not going to be standalone. Most people are not putting out, you know, chat GPT competitor or something like that. They're building into customer support application mm -hmm. that's on a mobile or something mm -hmm. like that. So are you providing solutions that actually help understand because there can be drift, there can be hallucinations. How far into that stack do you currently go today? So we generally provide solutions for like observing the, uh, the way these models are used inside of the application, right? So for example, we in CloudWatch application signals, we released support for uh, analyzing how well the customer that wrote, wrote some code that leverages a particular model how well that, that model is responding. And a customer can get visibility down to what sort of responses are getting generated and what is their temperature, what is their latency. As you said, it's all going to come down to, is my customer at the end happy, right? And if customer is receiving slow answers, then they're probably not going to be as happy. And so this is a tool that many customers can use to evaluate and build better Gen AI enabled applications. Because because I, th I think you just hit on one thing that I, I find very interesting is how hot is it, or you, you're talking about how really you know accurate it's being, or is it coming back for retries, or somebody retrying the same mm -hmm. prompt, or you, so you can actually understand and you're looking at prompts and being able to evaluate exactly. that. Exactly, and so that's how you gain better visibility into how you're using your. Uh, LLM models or underlying models and whether they're doing the job. Yeah. And how does, how does this, I mean, cause that's a super exciting stuff because it actually talks to different personas. Mm -hmm. You're not talking to the app developer necessarily that is the full stack engineer or something like that. You're talking maybe even to data scientists who are having to give out, but how do you handle providing observability tools to people of different personas? In that yeah, one. that that's that's a very interesting aspect. In that, generally, um, observability is part of the integrated lifecycle, right? So when you come to AWS or any cloud, right, you are going to create an environment. You're going to do some amount of governance, set up security policies, right, and then you're going to develop applications, and then you're going to put them in production, and then you're going to observe them, and then you're going to secure them. So we've spent a lot of time listening to customers on that aspect. So we understand that ultimately AWS is the product, not individual services. This is the product that you use and it has to be an integrated life cycle. So a couple of examples where we heard customers and, and actually launched uh, features to help with that, right? So number one, uh, last reInvent, we launched a feature called application, um, uh, my application. So this is a common AWS context to unify understanding of what application is. Here's my payment application that I care about, right? And in that integrated experience, you can see how much it costs to run that application, uh, how secure it is. Is it healthy? What is the latency, current latency of responses uh, of that application, right? How many recent deployments happened for that application, right? So you can see a unified view of, of, of an integrated um, set of concerns that you would have in a normal life cycle with an application. Do, it, oh, God. So, yeah, it just, that's fascinating because I, I think one of the, the FinOps aspect of it has become a very hot topic for a lot of organizations. And uh, knowing a little bit about the AWS services, does that plug back into something like Cost Explorer or so that, the people in the finance department who are probably only going into Cost Explorer, they're not hopefully going through all of the console. Yep. And how does that really work for that? that that's the beauty of it, because in this integrated, ex it does. So all the information comes from Cost Explorer. It just gets sliced so that it gets presented with respect to that application, right? Not your entire account, as an example, right? Right. And so, you know, as a customer, you can sort of finesse that understanding of what that application is and then present it in the right uh, right manner. Um, however, a, a different persona that, for example, may be worried about your account costs, right, or your governance, can go to an individual service and get the same perspective from a different angle. 
And so this, this allows a variety of personas to kind of interoperate and collaborate in AWS to achieve sort of a better, better business outcome. When you take that other approach and you take the service down approach, can I go in there and say, here's my uh, hottest from a cost perspective uh, application solution, whatever, what do you call it, my app? My application. Your my application. Here's the, you know, finance my application, Gen AI doing my 10K work at the end mm -hmm. of the quarter. And it spikes, and I see it spike every, you know, last month of quarter, and then it comes down and it spikes and comes down. Is that how somebody could actually go in and see it from, you know, an EKS? I want to see what are the hottest my applications on EKS. Yep, and so that's the idea. I mean, we're still on the journey to integrate it more deeply in AWS, but you know, for the services that we've been we've been able to integrate, right? It provides both of those perspectives. So one is when you log into AWS console, right in the home page, you can see here's my applications and click on each one and get that integrated perspective, right? But you can also go to individual, you know, services like security or cost and understand this the items that relate to that application in you know in reverse so when is a problem mm -hmm. you're obviously providing the data to observe that visualize it etc what happens when there's a problem who addresses it maybe it's different personas they maybe collaborate um you're feeding that information uh, do you see a point where or are you making recommendations as to what to do will ai at some point do that uh -huh. so there's the variety of tools are built for different personas to do their job, right? Security engineer will go look at, you know, security hub and understand whether there's any vulnerability, right? right? Um, ultimately, um, they're built for individual personas, but they all have to collaborate. So this, and then there has to be some rendezvous points, right? Where they can meet and share information that would be relevant to each other, right? So my applications is one, you know, typically the aspects of observability is another, right? So like, what metrics do I have? Are they telling, what, what do we have in common? We have a problem where, you know, our orders are not getting processed, right? And that starts the, the investigation and it can go in variety of, uh, you know, aspects of your life cycle to be able to resolve it, right? So we try to provide those journeys and connect them as much as possible. Um, you know, a customer who sees an alarm somewhere, you know, relative to the orders may actually go and have to increase capacity and therefore be concerned about the cost, right? As an example. Uh, another good example of uh, an integrated life cycle of that sort is it's not all about firefighting, right? Um, a lot of the engineering that the customers do in AWS is about kind of fireproofing their application. So here's one example, right? So we've published a uh, well-architected framework that goes at depths and variety of aspects of how to be more resilient. Here's one of them uh, that we do internally as well. Um, you can do a lot of injected faults. For example, simulate a region failure and then use observability to understand the impact of that on your application, right? And so that's where a lot of the tools that we build, they kind of interplay and they complete the full life cycle that way. So a bit of a what if, yes, you know, and you can sort of simulate that. Igor, oh, your last yeah, question? yeah, last question is that uh, again we talked about Otel, but I, I have a feeling that's not your only open source strategy. So that and open source is very big with this, especially in that community and the dev community and Kubernetes and things of that nature. What really is your your strategy from an open source perspective around observability? So we love open source. Right. So it's, as you said, it's not just open telemetry. It's a key element that we bet on across the board, but it's not just one, right? For example, last year, we were number one uh, contributor to the Cortex project, which is a multi-tenant en engine behind the Prometheus, right? We are driving open search. Open search is a big project. We're investing a lot of resources to make it awesome, right? So to, uh, and, and, and so to us, it, all comes down to customers. If customer wants to have open source and wants to collaborate with us on it, right? We want to make sure those customers are provided for and they're happy. And AWS is the best place to run any open source. 
that's ultimately where it comes down to is what customer choice and whether AWS is the best place for it. Igor, thanks so much for coming on. I'd love to have you back and, uh, and dig into this further. Absolutely. Thank you. You're, thank you're very welcome. Okay, this is Dave Vellante for Rob Strecce. We're here on the ground, beautiful Seattle. The weather is awesome. We're going to go to the football game tomorrow night. Keep it right there. We got more action from the Cube. Right back.